just tell us the emotions that you're going through right now. You know, it's uh, it's it's awful. I mean, there's no other way around it. You know, these these kids are are they become your family? They become your sons and. Uh, you know, you, you tell parents, we're not going to be you, we can't be, but we want to be the next closest thing, and, and, and we mean it, and that's what happens. Yeah. When you, uh, your, 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 your guys, your program, they're, they're out and about right now. Some yeah. may still be here. So how are you remaining in contact with them and keeping them informed on what's going on sure. and, and, and how to deal with stuff like this? Yeah, I think one of the things you, you, you use, you know, the, these, the phones as access that we have to them, you know, where we're able to just get right to them immediately. So me, their position coach, who is kind of like their guy that they go to, you know, he's talking to them and keeping them up on what's going on. We do have some back, and, you know, you just want to communicate to them and let them know we're here, um, you know, for whatever you need. And then, of course, we got access to counselors and other things, you know, that the school provides. Yeah, this is a nightmare. It really is. Coach, it? it really is. I mean, this is the this is the worst thing that could happen. You know, I mean, we can overcome injuries. We can overcome losses. Um, there's other games. This is it's awful. Yeah. Um, you remain in contact with the family and stuff like that uh, because you are an extension of their family right. to this family. So talk about being the bridge there. Yeah, you just, you know, you want them to know that it's a support, it's a communication. And I, and I said this earlier, you know, going through a death when I was 19 and my mom, I, I look back to it, you're shaking these hands, these people are sending you well wishes and condolences. And at that time, it, it doesn't register. But years later, you know, you come back to that. You know, you come back to those things and say, this is how my my son was thought of and what he meant to his teammates and, and how he's going to be, um, live forever through them and you know and, and what great things he was doing and, and, and all that's true so I think those are the things that give the family comfort which is what I want to do right now is help comfort them and help comfort our players and coaches. What was Greg like? You know he was really one of those guys that just gets you excited he always had a smile on his face um, he actually loved practice you know this guy was a guy in the locker room saying I can't wait to practice I can't and he practiced like that um, you know, a great effort was not, you know, you think this five-star running back's been at Notre Dame and got a, he was not a prima donna. Mm -hmm. He didn't mind working. He took coaching, all those things that you tell a player. And I think the thing for us was getting him to understand the academic side of it. You know, this is just as important and going to be more important towards your future. we got to have this. Mm -hmm. and, and as I say all the time, the tutors, the study halls, the, the classes, you know, there is no missing. There is, you know. And, and I think he just finally fell into that. And then he starts seeing the reward. Wow, look at what my GPA has done. You know, it's the highest mm -hmm. GPA I've ever had in my life. And I think all that goes together. Yeah. Um, what was his work habits like uh, within the weight room, around the practice field, and with his teammates? Terrific. Uh, you know, and I, I've got a son on the team, so now I get that inside locker room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he said, you know, he was just heartbroken, and it was – this is a guy that everybody liked. This was a guy because he worked. You know, he put himself out front. He loved training. Uh, when usually that's what you find in great players. They actually love the, the parts that make you great. You know, mm -hmm. they love the, the training and the work and the weight room and the speed work and the, all of the above. And um, he was just, you, you knew he was going to be special. There was no doubt. We do not know why something like this happened uh, at, at this time. Um, and, and as a coach and as a parent, when you say they're breaking and going home uh, for an extended period of time, what, what are the things that you say to them about ensuring that they come and return? Right. I, for me, that's a daily thing. I mean, it is. I guess that's the old high school coach in me. You know, you talk academics first. You talk character and who you hang out with and where you go and we're not out past midnight and mm -hmm. you know in season you got a curfew you just tell them you know what good happens after midnight all those things as a parent you say um, but we had literally just met um, I meet with all the players before they leave and of course Greg was a guy that we saw a lot mm -hmm. and we just discussed all those things and you know coach I'm you know I'm, he knew what kind of area you know that, that there's bad parts of Miami as are probably any city but you know he said Coach, I know where to be. I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna be smart. Can't wait to get back and get to training. And um, you know, he was one of those guys that were gonna be here for May. And so um, he said all the right things. So you know, that's that does give me some comfort. 
Uh, at, at this time, I don't know what can be learned, but just what can be learned, really? You know, I, I always, as a coach, you're trying to use a lesson. You're trying to go to history. You're trying to – this will be something that we look at just from a safety standpoint, and, and sometimes things just happen. Uh, I just said, you know, life is precious. You know, um, we talk about winning this day, you know, invest in this day, uh, know where you are, know who you hang out with, all of the above. I mean, we'll, we'll take lessons, and we want to remember this guy. Mm -hmm. He's an organ donor. Uh, somebody's people are going to be getting some very strong parts. No doubt. No talk doubt. a little bit about that. You know, that's something I really believe in, and I know he did. You know, you talk to his mom, and I think he had, had a classmate, teammate. I know it was a classmate who had gotten a kidney transplant while he was in school. So that became very important to him. He saw the difference it made in that person's life. Uh, you know, my dad had a kidney transplant 20 years ago. He's done great. So right here at UAB, in fact. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big deal. That tells you what kind of young man we're dealing with. It's still early on, uh, but have you guys discussed a way to remember? I know you said he's always a blazer, but is there something that you guys are planning on? Or We hadn't decided yet we're going to do something. Um, you know, whether that's a patch or, or whatever sticker, whatever that ends up being, we're going to do something in that 17 season starting, you know, even now. Mm -hmm. But we'll meet with the leadership group of the team and just decide what, what fits best. That says a lot when you say he's a blazer for life or forever. Correct. Um, uh, that, that says a lot about him, this program, and what you're trying to establish. Can you go into a little detail? Yeah, one of the big things for me that, that I didn't see when I got here was – you know, what did you do for the former players? A lot of it's our facility, you know, and I think getting a new facility where they have a place they want to come back to, their, their pictures are on the wall, they can show their kids. And one of the things I've asked from our former players, and, you know, we had almost 100 of them show up for a flag football game mm -hmm. this spring, get involved and really talk to our players about the job market. You know, these guys, that have, they're hard workers, they're committed. I mean, that's what you want. That's why you want athletes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they're good students help these guys, you know, we've got thoracic surgeons, we've got engineers, we've got uh, all these people in the medical field, we've got coaches. So come back, be part of this program, where we're headed, uh, the new facilities, and, and, and we want to recognize those guys, but we also want them to pour their self into these guys, mm -hmm. you know, and say, look, this is what this hard work is going to give you on the other side, this good life, you know, mm -hmm. and so we need those guys back, and, and really that's what I mean, it's, it's blazing for life. You saw the support rally when the program uh, shut down for a period of time. Are you seeing something similar to that in the support and love from the fan base in, no in, doubt. in this uh, devastating We've moment? just got, and I think one of the things that's happening, we've got this group of hardcore fans that have fought for this program. Now we're getting this extended family, and I said Birmingham, Jefferson County, and really it's almost become a national story. You know, me and you've had that talk before that, the return, you know, bringing football back. Uh, so it's almost like this thing has spread. we I mean, I've had so many calls and texts and um, just condolences and well wishes, and but I was getting a lot of that before. Mm -hmm. So I think that group of folks that now is just really growing out is really been last, part of that. Uh, last question on my part. Uh, when when you, the, the program has been on such a high and now this happens, what does it do? I think it takes you, you always is, you take stock of, of life. You take stock of, of how precious it is, and um, you know it, it, I, you don't. I don't want to say bump in the road because it's beyond that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know this is this is a life and, and a special life. But it's we just have to come back and take stock of, of 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 every day, you know, and what we do every day, and how we conduct ourselves, and and who we're helping. You know, are we, you know, you influencing somebody for the good every day? All those things that that I believe in. Coach, I think he had asked you, uh, and you had mentioned, how, how tough it was going through this. Is it because the players aren't here, a lot of them aren't here, is that tougher? There's no football games, there's no, I mean, if this had happened, <coughs> you know, as spring practice was starting or as summer practice, I mean, or does that matter? I don't think it matters. I, I just, you know, it is, you know, you get you, we all get into wins and losses and GPAs and budgets and we all do. You're going through your normal life every day and you're just trying to survive and uh, and then something like this happens. And uh, you know, I always say it's always somebody else. You know, you read about it, you see it. You know what you guys do and and when it it hits you, you know, and and um, and then you just get back to it's, it's just about people. And so I don't know. 
timing would have really mattered. I, I think it was hard for me knowing I had players everywhere who couldn't get a good answer. Uh, and that's, you know, kind of what I feel my job is to do, is to, you know, is to give these guys an answer and, and you know, as I say all the time, somebody's got to kind of be dad, you know, and that, that's coaches, that's kind of your role. And it was, that, was, that did make it tough that I couldn't, I couldn't tell them exactly what was going on.